Hi, this is Cheryl Gallant, your Conservative Member of Parliament for the boating-loving riding of Renfrew Nipissing Pembroke. On Monday, Statistics Canada announced that inflation was up again. Food prices are driven up by higher prices for fuel to get products to market. This is a direct result of Justin Trudeau's carbon tax and other anti-energy policies. But we've had just a small taste of what's coming. Higher inflation means higher interest rates, which means higher housing costs if your mortgage is up for renewal. Starting in July, Trudeau's new fuel regulations will take effect. Liberals routinely raise taxes by changing regulations. It's a sneaky way to stick it to Canadians before you even know what hit us. Credible energy analysts, such as former Liberal MP Dan McTeague, have warned these fuel regulations could cost as much as 30 cents a liter. Others calculate it at 42 cents a liter leap all at once. Food prices are especially vulnerable to increases in the price of fuel. It takes fuel to ship fertilizer to farms. It takes fuel to run farm equipment. It takes fuel to ship grains and livestock to processing facilities. It takes fuel to ship food to grocery stores. Trudeau knows this, but he doesn't care. His food and personal chef are paid for by taxpayers, you. And don't think you can supplement your diet by hunting or fishing. Trudeau's coming for that too. This week, Trudeau is forcing his hunting rifle ban bill through Parliament. He cut off debate. He forced through dozens of amendments without scrutiny. During my speech on Trudeau's hunting rifle ban, I said this was just the latest insult to Parliament and democracy. As if to prove my point, an NDP MP abused parliamentary procedure to insult Canadians and interrupt my speech. They don't want Canadians to hear the truth. This bill strips away property rights from handgun owners. This bill creates a secret committee of anti-firearm extremists whose jobs it will be to ban hunting rifles. Please take a look and uh, share the speech. The link is in the description. Trudeau's contempt for rural Canada has no limit. Trudeau is moving forward with a charge for recreational boating. Previously, when you purchased a boat, you were required to register the boat with the federal government. It was a one-time registration, and it was free. But that wasn't intrusive enough for the Trudeau Liberals. Now Canadians must renew their boat license every five years and pay a $24 fee to start. If they forget to renew, they face a five thousand dollar fine. The government claims this is needed because their recreational boat registry is full of bad, out-of-date data, which means the federal government cannot be confident it will be able to inform boat owners they must renew their license or face a massive fine. Together with Trudeau's new boat tax, local marinas are selling fewer seasonal dock rentals. That doesn't even take into account what Trudeau's carbon tax and fuel regulations will do to the cost of boat fuel. Then there's the engine and fuel line damage from the ethanol the gas is laced with. Fewer boats mean less money for marinas, which means fewer jobs in rural Canada. Hunting and fishing are a part of Canada's heritage, but Trudeau wants to cancel those too. Last week, I delivered a speech at midnight in the House of Commons, one day before the government unveiled its changes to the passport. In the speech, I argued the Trudeau Liberals in their pursuit of a post-national state were canceling any sense of Canadian patriotism, and the logical consequence of which is declining recruitment in the Canadian Armed Forces. Take a look. Order. 
Recruitment is cratering under this Prime Minister because Canadians know the truth. Why should they put their lives on the line in defence of Canada when this Prime Minister won't even defend the idea of Canada? How can you have a national defence if the Prime Minister believes we live in a post-nation state? These Liberals believe Canada is a racist, colonial, oppressor state. When radical extremists pull down the statues, this Prime Minister sides with the vandals. That was Tuesday. The next day, the Trudeau Liberals released the new design for the passport and essentially confirmed everything I'd said in my speech. Now, some in the legacy media are claiming Canada's Conservatives don't care about conserving Canada's history. They claim anyone upset about pictures in a passport is exaggerating. But this isn't about the passport or even about history. As the Liberal Minister said when they released the new design, this is about reflecting Canadian values. It's the Liberals who are claiming these pictures represent Canadian values. Who knew Canadian values included raking leaves and jumping in the lakes? The Trudeau Liberals had a choice. They could have selected images from Canada's history which represent Trudeau's vision of the country. The problem is there is no image from Canada's history that the radical socialists who make up Trudeau's base would ever accept. The Trudeau Liberals think everything about Canada is tainted by the original sins of racism and colonialism. And that's why the Liberals refuse to celebrate any history. The Liberals' friends in the media claim Conservatives just want to whitewash history. Pulling down statues of public figures, Painting over our, is painting over our past. In the United States, children are taught that George Washington never told a lie. In Canada, children are taught that our first prime minister was a drunk and his government was mired in the railway corruption scandal. Our first prime minister was not some mythical figure of virtue. He was flawed human, just like the rest of us, and yet his he and his fellow fathers of confederation set aside their significant differences over religion and language and began the first step in ending British colonial rule in North America. Americans' constitutional compromise was to count slaves as three-fifths of a person for the purpose of setting the electoral college. Canada's constitutional compromise was the protection of minority language and religious rights. Like Sir John A. Macdonald, Canada is not perfect. Mistakes were made, and we should never forget those mistakes, lest we repeat them. But Canada is also great. Canadians have accomplished great things. We should be proud of our country. Live from Ottawa, this is Cheryl Gallant.